Hello everybody, welcome to Michael Tech Room and Michael Payne YouTube channel. Today, are you ever wondering how I can how you can put DVDs onto some drive or hard drive, your one lovely terabyte hard drive or or stream it, whatever you want. Well, today we got a solution to ripping DVDs. So after the intro, we can explain what ripping DVDs is. So let's begin the intro. Hello, everybody. Why well, already said hello? Ah, oh. all right. So. What we're talking about is how you can rip, or what is ripping DVDs, and basically what ripping DVDs basically is, are you that copying movies and converting to a uh, language that the computer can read. Uh, but if you did do it directly, copy and paste, as normal as basically we do. If you want to take your document, copy and paste it, basically. Uh, but it's not going to play too well because the way the CD DVDs, the the way the DVDs is set up is for the DVD player to read. So it's not um, it's not all together. So it's on itty bitty piece should we say for the uh, DVD player can read basically but the problem is when you copy and paste it when you try and play it um you can mail is great act kind of weird next known you play with your favorite media player the screen go black then you got a little window warning sign that your hard drive for some reason was unsp unspons for some reason. And that problem with that too. But uh, playing off CD, that's okay. But playing it off of USB or one terabyte hard drive would be awesome because imagine that you don't have to carry like 10 CD. You don't have to. You can carry all your movie on a one terabyte hard drive. Not this version of hard drive, but a uh, USB hard drive and put million of million of video onto it. So that's very cool. And it's basically the same thing as ripping uh, CDs, basically. When you rip DVDs, it's as you rip, it's copying as it copying. It's converting into a computer language in a simple and explanatory way, I should say. And as it copy and pasting it, it's converting into a format uh, that you can use for your MP3 play or any devices too. So you got option with that too. So uh, let's get going, and right behind me is the website. So, uh, let's go to the website, and, uh, let's take a look at the website. Alright, so we are at the website, you see it on your screen, and I already took note of a uh, handbrake website, so what I'm going to do is uh, discuss <coughs> uh, a thing with that too. So the number one thing is uh, very clean looking, uh, not too much of, hey, download this, uh, none of these uh, distractions. So uh, I, do, I do like how it's uh, clean looking, um, it does display... Uh, the program that you get download, so that it's uh, that pretty awesome. Uh, now, other thing too with that along is ad free, so uh, you you're not gonna have too flashy ad, which it's 
very nice, uh, very nice, very nice, very nice touch. So that's pretty cool. Uh, nice. Uh, not too much of that stuff. Uh, simple, very simple too. Um, not too many, uh, not too many nonchalant stuff. Uh, not too many fancy stuff. Uh, it's very, very simple stuff, too. Uh, now, there was another page to do offer, um, as a platform with that, too. So, if we go to the other platform, uh, if we take a look, so, we, what we got is, we got, like, uh, for the Mac people, yay, yay, uh, window, uh, and nice thing is, they do offer a 64-bit, uh, operating system, and a 32-bit operating system, too. Uh, they do offer up in Ubuntu, which is very cool. So, if you're not type person who want to deal with window, if you want just to whip, uh, DVDs, uh, with Ubuntu, that is great, because Ubuntu... Uh, it's pretty cool too. So, uh, they do support all cross, cross, uh, platform too. So, that is a thumbs up too. So, uh, yes. So, on to me. Or, to the next section. Alright everybody, so next section is the installation and uh, how it went, I should say. Uh, so anyway, so let's talk about how the installation went and talk about my note of how I liked the installation. Was it simple? Was it, comp uh, was it too complicated or what? So uh, let's talk about the first thing on the list. First thing on the list is simple menu option, which is very cool. So you don't have no complicated option, so that is one of the things. So there is not a lot of things. It, you agree to a simple license, you hit next, you pick your file location, you hit next, and it will install the necessary stuff to get you up and running. Then so once you do that, you just hit finish. Very simple, very cool. Next thing on the list, no bloatware option, which, as you know, if you've been, if you've been using Vail for a long time, if you ever came across, like, a McAfee option, or, or, um, what the heck else, uh, or, uh, or a, uh, toolbar, uh, another thing probably is the ask wall, which, it's a popular thing, so uh, those are the the one we usually use that I come across. Uh, so that is very cool. So when you're installing it, you don't have to worry about missing that screen or what or something, or you won't. There is no worrying about about uh, bloatware option can install on your computer. So that's uh, pretty cool. Um, which is very simple and it's way free of no other bloatware well option. So the next thing on the list is a uh, simple menu, which I talk about uh, what that was on the simple menu. Uh, simple install, like I said, it's not too much of a uh, uh, fancy interface. It's very, it's a very simple uh, interface too, so very good. Uh, so that would be it on the list of saying, uh, yes, yeah, simple. So on to the next thing. Alright, the very next section is the menu interface, or the overview of the menu interface. So, uh, let's talk about the menu. The, sim the menu interface, it's a simple menu, in it's very simple interface. 
So very simple menu, that very clean overall. Not too fancy, not too fancy skin. Very clean looking. Uh, simple preset. So you have simple presets. So like on the side, if you see the word Universal, iPod, uh, all those uh, presets. Uh, those presets are designed for those uh, devices. So, like, um, iPod, uh, iPad, uh, like, Apple, Android phone, Android tablet, they have it preset to that, which is pretty cool in a neat, neat way. Uh, you do have nice video advanced, nice advanced video control settings, so, if you see the tab like uh, picture, filter, video, audio, subtitle, uh, chapter in advance, uh, those are pretty nice, uh, which I enjoy a lot. So that's the interface, so uh, on to the next one. Uh, video quality is going to be up next. Okay, so, uh, let's take a look at the interface, so you've seen the screenshot of this, uh, interface, but let's dig in a little more of the interface. So, on the side, right over here with my little mouse pointer, is, like I said, we got different presets for devices, so you got for Apple, and Android, uh, what the heck, Android phone and tablet. So you have those. So when you uh, when you install this program, uh, default it would be on normal. So for me, I have on universal. Like I said, you can play it on any devices. So um, so you got your preset. Uh, you got your source button over here, which you probably can't see by now. So we got, uh, like I said, the source file, so you can uh, open a folder to convert stuff, open a file, or scan a specific uh, file, uh, so you can do all kind of stuff. So this is where you can pick, and this is where you can pick uh, this, your DVDs too. So uh, once... You, uh, you got your source pick out, you can hit the start, uh, so, uh, that would be that, so let's zoom back out. So you got your start button and, uh, your source, like I said before. Uh, another cool option is, uh, you can right-click on this. No, not right-click on it, you can, s uh, select a default, like I have the universal selected. Uh, so you got your destination, so you can uh, save it in a place, like I said. Uh, you can see I've already with DVDs on this uh, computer. So cancel out that. So you got your destination. Uh, title, this way you can pick your title, and that way you can uh, pick the correct title. Uh, usually it's very smart, but it depends on the DVDs, uh, how many sections they, they, uh, put into. So that's another thing you gotta keep eye on, is it, it's very smart, but, um, sometime when they, the DVD manufacturer, when they put stuff on the DVDs, and, and when they put multiple chapter, it can confuse the program too. I should say handbrake. So it does confuse handbrake uh, a bit too. Uh, you got MP3 and MKV. Uh, so you got, like I said, you got picture. Uh, this is where you can pick your size and all the fan stuff. So you got your filter. You got video. This is where you can pick you. Uh, if that way you can pick. Um, you, if you want, you can pick, uh, uh, <clears throat> MPEG, so you can pick MPEG if you want that code or, 
for the geeky people. Frame rate, uh, you can pick frame rates. Like I said, uh, when I rip DDs, I put that same source that for the simple as that. So you got all the kind of geeky stuff you can control. That geeky, that very a lot of geeky stuff. So you got audio, so you can pick all your settings for this stuff. You can even pick like MP3, like lame we have. Or you can have on ACC. Uh, you got your uh, subtitle, you got chapters, you got the advanced stuff, uh, as you can see. Uh, so that's, that is very simple. Uh, another thing is you got a Q setting. So you can have a Q setting of section. Uh, now, another funny thing is, they have this option. So you got do nothing and shut down and zip in and hibernate. And lock the system and uh, log off or quit handbrake. Uh, which I'm not quite sure why this is a option, but I don't see any reason to lock somebody out or... Uh, or, or shut down, or log off, or what? I don't see any reason for me, so most time it's to do nothing. So it does show you what part it's working on, so that, uh, so that a nice part with that. Uh, you got your uh, option settings, so you got your update and all that stuff. Uh, you can pick a pass for that and the nice thing is you can do all kinds of stuff so like the extension you can set to you can have it on Mac or always use mp4 which I have it set to so you got subtitle uh, you got English so you can have it do English stuff or different language stuff um, you got many stuff too, so uh, you got that. Uh, so let's see you. Yeah, so you can ball kind. You can do all kinds of stuff with this, and as you can see. And close. So that's the overall interface of, or the overview of the interface. So uh, you can see that. And yep, so that'll be it for this section. On to the next one. <laughs> Alright everybody, so let's talk about uh, video quality uh, for sure, and we're going to talk about is it the worst of time to download and ripping disk? Is it worse or not? I would say yes, it can be worth your time. Uh, video quality does look nice. It does even look nice at default settings, so that's okay, which it's pretty good. Um, most of the time my setting is uh, no universal and uh, I do the, yes I have it set well, it's, yeah. So, um, that's for me, I should say. But anyway, video quality does look nice, um, I would say, without my notes, video quality setting looks nice at default. Uh, does take a lot of CPU power to encode those uh, DVDs, so uh, be prepared to uh, uh, be prepared to overload your CPU or your processor. So uh, it does do fine with the uh, the newer laptop. I would say like the new, not the newest, newest, but I would say like the 2010 
uh, to build. Uh, 2007, it's a little bit slow uh, because of CD drive generation. Uh, what else? Uh, very small with the cropping of the size too. I never have issue with cropping. So uh, that's pretty good. Luigi is pretty good actually. Dead right on. So pretty good. Uh, and that should be that should be it for um, for uh, for for this section. Um, I would definitely put a uh, video capture of that to show you it does look nice actually so uh, I will definitely insert that in probably by now I don't know I don't know it's random line <laughs> why well, it's random line. so anyway so that's that's what it does look nice it's worth your time and yeah okay Alright, on to the next section. Next section is the con side of things. And we're going to talk about what bad and what not good. What, what the gripes thing about it too. So the, ne the first thing on the list I have on my note. I have to look. Uh, is MPEG, MPEG setting. So if you're a big fan of MPEG. Um, if you're not a if you knew about that if you want to pair I would say a default setting it for um, for him MPEG MPEG I don't know how you pronounce that setting I would definitely put a letter so you can understand so MPEG uh, at default setting it does look terrible for sure and uh, you gotta find, another bad thing is, you gotta find a, a script file, uh, allow you to rip DVDs, if you don't load, if you don't load the script file, what would happen is, you won't, it, the, the handbrake won't allow you to rip disk. Uh, and the reason why they don't put that script file is, is they don't want to be sued, by these bloody protection people. Yeah. Getting... Is it weird how you can get sued over this stupid mayhem mess? So, you have to find the script file, you have to download, you have to copy and paste, you gotta find the program for the program file to do that. So, you do have to do a little thing. Now, people who knows the way around the window, who knows how to copy and paste, that's going to be easy. For non-tech savvy people, yeah, this program not going to work out for non-tech savvy people. What else? Um, slow with, it definitely slow with, uh, very slow with all DVD drive. Very slow. Uh, I would say I have a, a Dell Inciborn, uh Slimline computer, uh, which is a 2007 computer, and that DVD drive in that computer is slow as heck. <laughs> slow as heck, it's still running with no XP. Um, so that does tell you that it can be sl it can be, you can do it, on a old Camille, but it's gonna be somewhat slow, it's gonna be somewhat finicky with you too. Uh, so, now with slightly new Camille, the Windows 7 Camille, a Windows 7 Camille can work, um, because the DVD drive, every, the DVD drive, uh, can read it faster, and the reason why it can read faster is, um, the generation. So, um, for the DVD drive and the Dell, that's a older generation, which, yeah, it's it's a slow DVD drive, which I'm not quite sure if 
every order community going to have that or not. Now another thing you gotta keep, you gotta watch out for is um, some of these DVD drives can be very sneaky with the um, uh, copy protection. So keep eye on that. So uh, I would definitely say. So those are only my three con side, or I should say bad side. I don't know what the heck con or whatever. I'm gonna say bad side. Uh, those are all my only bad side is M MPEG setting at default saying does look bad. Uh, you gotta find a script file. And it's very slow with auto DVD drive to read. Uh, so those are all my only three complaints about this. So, uh, undo. Alright, so before we install, uh, before we install the program, uh, before you install it, you need to check the operating system, see if you have a 64-bit or a 32-bit. And the reason why there's a 32-bit and a 64-bit uh, is 64-bit is, is more for the um, higher power computer, and the 32-bit little more for the low-power computer. So that's the reason why. So you need to check, see if you're running a 64-bit uh, or 32. Without, if you don't get the correct one, it won't allow you to run the program. So what you need to do is, uh, I, the simple way is going over to your start menu, your start button. And when you go to your start button, uh, that uh, right click on my computer and once you right click just click on computer property in computer property you should have a uh, it should say uh, the the um, operating system that you're running now if we take a look at Windows XP uh, the con the what the heck the information uh, the problem with the, the information is it doesn't tell you, so it's a little bit tricky. Uh, but to f don't forget, you can Google search how to so uh, how to find out uh, on Windows XP uh, how to uh, find out if you want a 64 bit or sorry two. Uh, but Windows 7 is a little bit easy to read. Uh, Vista is easy to read. Uh, if you're running a 64-bit or sorry, 2 in window 8 and could possibly window 10. So those are the main operating system that you can see very easily. So on to the next section. So we are done. So on to the installation of it. Alright, so we talk about... Uh, what you need to know about 64-bit and sorry, 2-bit. So once you find those out, you have to go to Handbrake website to uh, download uh, the application. So once you find your appropriate application for your uh, bit, once you find the bit uh, right operate, ah, uh, the right right bit number for your operating system once you install it. Uh, this is the time you don't want to open it just yet. So we need to add a file with that too. And one of the files is a script file that we need to download from VLC Media Player. So don't worry, there is a link below the video for that. So you don't need to, oh my god, I need to type it uh, it's all below the video. So you did need to download the script file and once you download the script file You need to copy and paste that into a program file So uh, that all you do to download and copy it to the program file Alright, uh, well, so before we do a copy and paste and all that stuff 
uh, once you download your sub file, so once you download Handbrake and uh, uh, the script file into your uh, default location, Luigi uh, download Luigi. So once you get Handbrake set up, um, don't open it yet. It's, it's one that set up menu on it. But um, the last piece we need to copy and paste is the script file. But before we copy and paste, we need to rename it. And renaming it in Windows is a simple process to do. So you just right click and we'll go rename. Once we name, we click one more time because we don't want to waste the whole thing. We just want to get rid of the two and the slash. So I'm just going to use the back and forth arrow key. And what I do is I waste the two and the slash. And click any random white place. Once you're done, and boom, we are done. And now we can proceed copy and pasting in the program file once you rename it. So that is would be it. So now we should be on to the next section of uh, copy and pasting it to the correct location. And now the next section should be how to run Handbrake 2. So, uh, see you on the next So section. once you download them from the internet, uh, if you have a computer, so if we go to, uh, my computer, so if you have a Windows 7, uh, computer, your download folder would be in the sidebar. For Windows XP user, what we need to do is we need to go to my document, once we in my document, there should be a download folder. So once you go to download folder, so we in download folder. So once you install, once you go to the setup process with Handbrake, once that installed, you need to copy and paste the script file. So once you get your script file uh, copied, which you you just have to right click and uh, copy it. So once you copy it, we have to go to the computer hard drive, the C local drive. And once we in that, we have to go into the program right here. So we need to go to that, to the program. And once we over at the program file, we need to find the handbrake uh, program file, which is right here. So once we found it, this is why you did right click and uh, paste it in the folder. Uh, I should yeah, there we go. So you can paste it. So all you have to do is copy and paste the script. File. And all these right here are the script file which allows it to run. So if we find the script file, which this has got to be the one right here. So this is a script file that you need to download and copy and paste. Without this script file, this script file is going to tell Handbrake, hey, it's okay to rip DVDs now. Which you see in oil, you have to go to VLC website to, to download that script. Now, you don't have to run the script to do a simple copy and paste like I showed you with this. This should be the same as Windows XP and Windows 7 and other operating system go with this. So uh, make sure you copy and paste this 
and sorry bumping the tripod so don't forget that so back on to me now and you know how to do it or the next step is ripping DVDs okay so let's show you how to rip DVDs or show you how I rip DVDs uh, when I do it so once you pick your uh, DVDs which it's non-focus so once you pick that oh there we go so once you pick that we're going to take the CD out of the case pop it in the computer okay this list double as you can see if you see the red circle Okay, let me pop it. <laughs> we're going to show you. Look at that little red circle. This disc is copy protected. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. They have it. Yeah. But uh, let's focus back on this. And boom, we already in focus in a tail. Get that popped out, set to the side, open the DVD drive, as you can hear, and slide it in, and close it. If you have your computer set to window default, once you pop in the disk, you would have a pop-up menu, but if you're one of those type person who can't stand the auto pop-up menu, you don't have to. So, once we uh, pop the DVD in the computer, uh, what we're going to do is go to source, and right here, if I can zoom in like halfway in for you people. As you can see, we got the CD option uh, right here. But and you can click on it too. Uh, fortunately for this camera it doesn't want to so I usually have to go to let's see here. No, wrong option. Open a funnel. Set you back down. And line you back up. And now we zoom. Out. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, if this is the same problem you have, uh, we got a little simple menu. So we did click the plus sign. Once we click the plus sign, we did select that. And I usually hit enter. And this is where it uh, say please wait. So this is where it's scanning the title and this is where it can come up with the chapter as you can see so I'm gonna stop recording once this is done so the program got done scanning the disk uh, as you can see right here it's already uh, name it uh, and uh, it's yeah it, name it uh, but the annoying thing you have to do with this is I have to erase the annoying number so like if we and if we click save see this makes sense for a title as you can see it makes sense for a title uh, nice thing is uh, if we go back again to browse uh, we can put in multiple locations, so we can save on to these removable, you can put on the SD, uh, any option you want to. Uh, uh, but uh, the default folder I have set up is in the WIP DVDs, so you can tell it to go somewhere else, as you can see. So once you uh, got that location save, um, uh, do make sure you do have the correct uh, the correct chapter with that too. 
So always make sure. Uh, the thing I like to do is uh, for the frame rate. If we zoom in on frame rate. So I put as same as the source when you rip in disk. And for video codec, I put at this widget Luzi. Luzi a default setting, so uh, uh, Luzi that's what I do. So once you go through the setting that you like, once you got the correct chapter, uh, once you got your uh, correct uh, preset to, once you found the preset uh, for your device, So, like I said, once you found found your quick preset, uh, this is where you can hit start. Once you hit start, it will whip the DVDs. And once you whip the DVDs... Uh, na, 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 na. You should have a movie. Looking like, let's see here, which one I want to play. So it should be looking like this. As you can see, the quality does look too bad as you can see it uh, did a quick uh, a correct um, cropping as you see so this is well it's very small that uh, every DVD have a different size to it uh, as you can see So, uh, pretty good, uh, very nice to, uh, if you want to put on a hard drive or a some drive, you definitely can put it on there and take it somewhere uh, on your trip. Uh, when you copy it to a some drive, make sure you have a larger some drive, a uh, larger capacity size, so you can uh, store like a couple. Uh, of movies on your sim drive. And here is the final quality uh, looking. So as you can see it's not um very good quality as you can see you can see the core detail a very clean line that that look normal sound pretty good I can't do a sound uh, without getting the copyright strike or getting the complaint so as you can see Yeah, so, pretty good. You probably can't see it on camera too, so that's the uh, thing. You probably have to see it personally. So where was the scene that we can, uh, that we can, uh, go with a little more bridal, a little more bridal image. And uh, there we go, we at a, uh, at, <laughs> so here is a finally a little more better scene how it looked. Don't worry, I will insert a capture, a uh, capture of it. I will definitely capture a, a capture a uh, scene, so you can look at it a little more good. Okay, so enough with this. All right, what's all this about, Butler? This dinner party? Ours, what the reason why? Ours, what to do and die. Die. 
Merely quoting, sir, from Alfred Lord Tennyson. Hmm. I prefer Kipling myself. The female of the species is more deadly than the male. Do you like Kipling, Miss Scarlet? Sure, I'll eat anything. Shark's fin soup, madame. So is this for our host? No, sir, for the seventh guest, Mr. Body. I thought Mr. Body was our host. Sorry, yeah. I am. Yeah. So who is our host, Mr. Wadsworth? Mm. <laughs> well, I'm going to start while it's still hot. Oh, now, shouldn't we wait for the other guests? I will keep something warm for you. What did you have in mind, dear? Someone's got to break the ice, and it might as well be me. I mean, I'm used to being a hostess. It's part of my husband's work, and it's always difficult when a group of new friends meet together for the first time to get acquainted. So I'm perfectly prepared to start the ball rolling. I mean, I, I have absolutely no idea what we're doing here, or what I'm doing here, or what this place is about, but I am determined to enjoy myself, and I'm very intrigued. And, oh, my, this soup's delicious, isn't it? You say you are used to being a hostess as part of your husband's work? Yes, it's an integral part of your life when you are the wife of a... Oh, but then I forgot we're not supposed to say who we really are, though, heavens to Betsy, I don't know why. Don't you? I know who you are. Aren't you going to tell us? How do you know who I am? I work in Washington, too. Washington? So you're a politician's wife? Yes, I, I am. Well, come on, then. Who's your husband? At least you know how to whip DVDs. Uh, now, now the thing you gotta keep in mind that you can get easily in trouble with this. So keep in mind and make sure you be careful how you share this with people, uh, especially people who knows uh, the legal rule of uh, of this stuff. Like you seen on the DVD, there was a. Uh, copy protection so to be very careful uh, you can easily get fined very easily if you don't be very careful so for your own personal use it's okay it's not bad for your own personal use uh, for sure most time if you did use it for your personal use to take it on a trip and sorry about that tripod again but anyway back to that uh, you can take it any way you want for your own personal use. Um, if you try to lo upload it to YouTube, you can easily get a copyright. Uh, very easily. This program can convert into an easy format that you can easily, easily upload it to YouTube. So, very easy. <sighs> so, on to me. Okay, everybody, so we took a look at the overview. We've done the overview of Handbrake. Talk about as you watch a few time, And we talk about, oh, we we did a how-to video of how to uh, whip a DVD and how to set up with that too. So you, it's in on one video. So that's cool. So what I'm going to do is in the video, I want to say a special thanks for you people who is watching this and join this too and find it very helpful too. Don't forget if this video was very helpful, feel free to uh, like this and comment this video too. So don't forget that. Um, now another thing too with that, you can uh, subscribe or Google Plus me, whichever way will work for you people. And don't forget, you can uh, support the channel any way you like. So you can uh, use, you can, uh, uh, you can donate something or, or, um, what the heck, donate or help out project on Amazon uh, or donate a little bit of money for the YouTube channel. So you can do any of those stuff too. So don't forget that. And, uh, oh, 
as soon before I forget this my Flickr page too. Don't forget, visit the link below the video. So check those out. Uh, there is a M there is a uh, Amazon project and all that stuff if you want to help out. So you are definitely welcome to this. And I will get Scoutor out now. So I will catch you next time, people, and enjoy.